you know, most hobbyists in the automotive hobby um, have dreams, and they dream about having a car that they always wanted when they were a teenager, or they have dreams about restoring a car that the family's owned for 80 years, you know, or they have just dreams about something that they, you know, as a level of where they've gotten to in life. My usual advice to people is, well, you know what, go and buy the best one you can find and save yourself a whack of money. But a lot of people, when it, especially when it's an heirloom, um, they want to restore it. This can drain your pocketbook in a real hurry. And, and, and if you're going to spend the money, be very careful about the way you spend it. It is an expensive proposition. Just make damn sure that the shop that's working on your car is an honest shop. And, is, and, and capable. There's a lot of guys who are honest, but they take on projects that are way out of their league. Then it ends up sitting in the back corner of a, you know, of a shop, not being paid any attention to it, becomes an embarrassment, then it becomes a conflict, everybody's unhappy. You know, so I think that take it to people who know how to restore a car, not to your local body shop because the, you, you know, the guy painted a truck you saw once and it was a nice paint job. You know, every job is different. If you've, if you've got a car that needs to be restored, you should go to a shop that has been around for 10, 15, 20 years and has done many cars, not five or six. Well, let's put it this way. You're going to have to spend money. Don't be stupid about the way you spend it. If you're going to spend a ton of money, get a ton of work done for it. I'm Dave Granger. I'm the president of the Guild of Automotive Restorers, a restoration company that's been in business for over 30 years. We have restored over 2,500 cars, trucks, and other vintage vehicles. If you're curious about what goes on behind the scenes of a large restoration shop, join us at the Guild's Classics. But today I am on this Volkswagen 63 Common Gear. The customer said it was running pretty bad. He took it to another shop and they didn't do a very good job. Uh, apparently they spent a while diagnosing it and couldn't figure it out, but two minutes of looking at it, I noticed that this fuel filter here is completely plugged up and it was put in the line after the fuel pump. The fuel filter should always be before the pump because obviously if dirt gets into the pump, the pump stops pumping things. Um, but yeah, I'm just spending today getting it running, figuring out all the issues with it. Uh, come across a mixture of things. Um, at the moment, I've already taken the intake off. Uh, they weren't tight, so the whole carburetor and the uh, intake manifold here, it was just moving around freely. So I would imagine that there was a vacuum leak there. Uh, there's old fuel in the tank and the fuel line is pretty dirty. Somebody also used vacuum lines as fuel lines, which is, you don't do that because it's a different compound of rubber. Uh, the rubber, it kind of like swells up and like breaks away. And if it swells up, then it obviously it stops the flow of fuel. And also it breaks away. And then that's probably what most of that goo is in the filter. So it probably just built up in there and plugged it all up. I, I don't know who was working on it before, but they had no idea what they were doing basically. I mean, they had, they had a fuel pressure fuel pressure gauge plugged into the fuel filter so they could quite clearly see the fuel filter there so it's pretty obvious that it's plugged up and like the symptoms that the customer is complaining of is usually fuel related and yeah for some reason they pulled the spark plugs out left them out so you're gonna have to go in there clean them up before I put the plugs back in because I'm, I'm it hasn't run in a while and the plugs have been out for a few months so it's gonna be a bit of dust build up in there so Originally this car had a 1200cc engine in it and the customer wanted a little bit more power for the highway because obviously Volkswagens aren't the greatest on the highway. So this is now a 1600 twin port. Uh, it's put a two barrel carburetor on it, but still has the stock exhaust on there so the engine isn't breathing as it should with that carb. So there's a new exhaust to go on and yeah, it's just basically just a quick tune up and solve all the issues that he had. Right now I'm just placing the vacuum hose from the carb to the distributor here. Um, they actually had a fuel line there. And they kind of got their hoses mixed up. I don't know what 
somebody was doing, but. So I'm just gonna put the appropriate hose on there. This is the hose that was on before. This is actually a piece of fuel line. I mean, it worked, but it's pretty ugly. It's like big and bulky and there's no need for it when she used the correct hose for the correct application. Uh, another thing I noticed when I was working on it is the fuel hard line that runs from the tank to here. I noticed on the other side of the firewall here, you can't see it, but it's actually more vacuum line back there and it's not even clamped to the hard line. So I'm amazed that it wasn't leaking fuel and it hasn't fallen apart. And of course, where the fuel lines are, it's in the hot engine bay. So as soon as that starts leaking, flames everywhere. Uh, so I'm gonna have to, at one point, get it up on the hoist. I'm gonna drain the tank because the tank is full of old gas. Then I'm gonna replace the fuel line from the tank all the way back here. Yeah, I'm just gonna revamp the whole fuel system. And then we know that it's gonna, that, that there's nothing wrong with the fuel and I'm pretty certain it's gonna solve the guy's issues. If it doesn't, it's still running a little bit rough, then it'd be a, then the car will need tuning, but I don't wanna to touch that till we have it basically running anyways. So I think I've found what they have done here. The outlet of the fuel pump here is different size to the inlet on the carb. So I guess they've just, so obviously this hose fits on here nicely, but doesn't fit on the pump too good. So I guess their way of fixing it was just to do this basically. Use that as kind of an adapter to go from the small inlet to the big outlet. I mean, it doesn't really cause any problems, but it's pretty ugly, right? I mean, like, these pumps aren't exactly powerful or anything, so this already has to pump enough fuel for this car, which is enough, but when it's got to go pump it through this swollen vacuum hose and then through a filter, then all through this, like, quite far for that fuel to travel upwards right so you want to make it as short as possible um, so I'm gonna cut this hose down and I'm gonna find the proper adapter to run a small hose and an adapter and then into the bigger hose so we're replacing the exhaust here because he wanted to get a little bit more power out of the uh, 1600 he has. Uh, this is just the stock exhaust, as you can tell the tubes are pretty damn small. Uh, so right here, we have a nice performance header system to go on. It's not gonna make huge horsepower difference, but it's gonna help the engine breathe better with the big carburetor he has on there. So with the decent carb and the decent exhaust system, it's gonna allow the engine to breathe better and it's gonna give him a little bit more power. Especially when he's on the highway, he's gonna notice a big difference in that. Pretty much done back here. Uh, fuel lines are done. Everything's plugged back in back here. So what I gotta do is put the gas tank back, drop it back down, bolt it down, put some fresh gas in it and should be ready to go. Shot it off the curb. Yep. <laughs> Uh, so I just tried cranking the engine over, uh, it started popping out the carburetor which is a sign that the timing is off. So I'm just going to set the timing and then we should be good. So when you set the timing you take number one cylinder spark plug out and you crank it slightly till you feel the piston hit the top and then you know that that cylinder is where it needs to be. You need to turn the distributor and the spark leads you find the number one spark lead and make sure it's pointing at the cylinder and once that then you follow the rest of the leads and Bob's your uncle. Okay so tried setting the timing uh, as, as you can see it's still popping and it's just not firing up as it should. Uh, spark plugs are good uh, we can't see any problems like the timing set great so the next step is do a compression test and hope for the best.
the the compression is great. It's better than I expected, so that's not the issue. So Greg was adjusting the screw in the carburetor there to try and control the amount of fuel going in. Um, seems like maybe the flow got stuck or there's some other issue inside the car. We're getting too much. It's overfueling like crazy too, eh? So we're going to pull the carburetor off. Check it out, see what's going on with it. See what the float set's like on it. Uh, I mean, Again, like, they took this carb off, put another one on, then put us back on it. Who knows how many times they messed around with yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's our best bet. Uh, so we just replaced the distributor, we put a, another one in, uh, replaced all the leads and the coil pack too. Um, basically, we were pretty sure that the distributor that was in there, the previous shop put it in there and the car had, hadn't run since that was put in. So we figured that's the problem, we put a new one in and it fired up, set the time in and ran good. But it's got some carb issues now so we just got to fine tune the carb. And, should be good. Carburetor feeds the engine with its air and its fuel. And that's, that's the air and fuel mixture that makes it run basically. It has to be very precise for the fuel mixture to be correct. If the air and fuel mixture is slightly off, it won't run or it just won't run good at all. Pretty sure the problem was when we opened the carburetor up, there was some dirt in there. Uh, we just found lots of tiny little pieces of dirt, so I'm sure there's like something in there that was blocking something. So we've cleaned it all out, put it back together, and it should be good. I mean, it doesn't need rebuilding, everything's good, and nothing's worn out.